Good morning. Uh, this is Dr. Aisha Butalia. I welcome you all for today's session on V model advantages, disadvantages, and when to use it. This V model is a verification and validation model in our software engineering project management process models. We are under the topic, uh, the main course, software engineering and project management. In, in that subject, we were discussing about the various process models for adaptability, okay, uh, which is related to software engineering. And under that, we discussed a lot of models earlier. Uh, with the same website, we had discussed about the waterfall model, okay, last time, and also about the types of prototype model. Uh, of course, uh, one of the lectures we also discussed uh, in general about the RAD incremental model. So today we are going to go about the various uh, other models. So there is also a linear model which we discussed in our um, primary lecture on process models. So after linear model, we discussed about the waterfall model. Then we also discussed about the prototyping, pro prototyping model, which is an iterative model. And today we are going to discuss about the V model. This uh, link, I found it very uh, useful and uh, comprehensive. So you can access this website. I'll share you on the chat box and the description box. So all the notes would be provided on this website. So let's start. What does V stand for? It stands for verification and validation model. So just like waterfall model, the V shape, because V naam hai, to uska shape jo hai, wo V ka hota hai, cycle ka. So V shaped, some things which I'm highlighting over here, I would recommend that you pen down as notes. Because you should be, whenever you come to the another lecture, you have certain notes written on hand so you can get connected till the lecture starts. So this is a V-shaped lifestyle model. It's a sequential path of execution. Of course, it is also using a sequential path, no doubt. So if you have option, which type of path a V-shaped model uses, okay, whether a spiral or a prototype or an iterative or a sequential, so it will be sequential. Sequential means one after the other. So each phase must be completed before the second phase begins. So V uh, model is one of the software engineering development models. Okay, so we have a lot of software engineering development models. So these are the development models. Okay, so if the question is asked about what are the software engineering development models, these are the various types which we have discussed a couple of times in our previous recordings. So let's go on to the V model diagram. So basically, as the name suggests, validation and verification. So it is mostly for the testing of the product. So testing of the product is planned in parallel, in corresponding phase in the development of V model. Jobi may highlight karti. I want you to pen it down. So please note this down. So it is a testing of the product is planned in parallel with the corresponding phase of the development in V model. So ye aapka V hai. ठीक है ये सारे जो फेजेस है ये आपके डेवलपमेंट के हैं ओके और ये सारे आपके टेस्टिंग के हैं लास्ट टाइम वी हैड डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द वेरियस फेजेस ऑफ आवर प्रोजेक्ट लाइफ साइकिल ओके वी हैड डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द वेरियस फेजेस और स्टेजेस ऑफ आवर लाइफ साइकिल इफ यू रिमेंबर दीस वर योर रिक्वायरमेंट gathering and analysis, then your analysis, then your design, then your coding, oblique implementation, okay? then your testing, and then your maintenance. So, this is your phases. You do testing and coding ke baat karte ho in a linear model or a waterfall model. But we model uh, what it is saying that after end of every uh, module, you need to test it. Okay, And it should go parallelly. So, these were the phases. Okay, this will be in the development phase and parallelly aapka unka testing bhi rahega. So here, if there is a 
uh, business requirement and specification okay this is requirement gathering basically so this is your SRS, system requirement specification. We have discussed this in detail in our previous recording. Okay, I'll share you the link of the recording also in this description box. So uh, in the business requirement model, you client to take the requirement from the client. And that related testing is called as acceptance testing. So when you make a document, you will get it validated by the client. Okay, because this is business related, so you accept this test. It's the name. See, software engineering is very easy. The only thing is these terminologies are new to you. So if a question is asked, what is acceptance testing? So you can immediately say it is the validation testing done after the business requirement specification. As simple as that. Okay, if it's these terminologies are going fast, you can uh, check out this recording two to three times. Then after this comes your system requirement specification where you will be analyzing what algorithms you are going to use, what, uh, what are the UML diagrams, what will be the design, what will be the architectural flow, okay, what will be the input, what will be the output, what will be the process model. So all these things, okay, whatever I said, just go through this recording two to three times and note it down because I clearly highlighted what will be there in the SRS. And obviously we have taken this lecture to so be points discuss where okay if you want i can still highlight over here in business requirement okay it will be totally from the client okay so it will be totally from the client and the validation also will be done by the client and it will be known as your acceptance test acceptance means the client is going to accept okay now after that it comes the srs so in SRS, this will be related, this will be interactive with client as well as the developers. Okay, so this will be made by project managers and project leaders, no doubt, but it will be interacted with client as well as designers, coders. And of course, the testers. Okay, so here this is as over, it is rightly said here, this is be told as system testing. So in system testing, everybody will be involved. Okay, so everybody will be involved over here. So just say you accept as testing ka SRS ka apka system testing. I hope this is very easy and clear to you. Okay. And what will be the phases in the SRS? We have already discussed in detail, but let's highlight it. Okay, your design, that means your UML diagram and architectural diagrams. Then you will have process models, which process model you are going to select, okay, out of the ones we have discussed. Okay, then it, you will have what are the tools, what are the techniques last time, which I told you to do as a homework. Okay, methods, algorithms, software, hardware. Okay, all these are what will be your input, what will be your output. All these things would be specified in your SRS. So after this is validate, uh, completed, it will be validated okay, by uh, even your client, not directly, but indirectly, okay, because this arrow is going over here. It will be uh, validated by your project managers, project leaders, even uh, this document would be shared to the higher uh, coders, team members, okay? and it will be known as system testing. Then uh, it is a high level design. So this is HLD, high level design. So in high level design, uh, your uh, UML diagrams will come under your low level design actually, and the data flow level zero will come in your low level design. In your high level design, it will be 
more of an architectural flow, system diagrams in detail, input, output, hardware, okay, and more uh, detailed UML diagrams. Okay, so even uh, data flow diagram at level one, level two, level three, and so on. So these will all come at the high level, right? And low level will be on the basic level detail, uh, DFD level zero. And you're in UML diagrams also, the use case diagram, activity diagram will come under your low level. In high level, uh, your class diagram, sequence diagram, deployment diagrams, okay, your state chart diagrams, all will come in your HLD. Of course, we have a separate lectures on these topics. So if you are not aware of that, you can go through those in our up upcoming sessions. So once those are fixed, then you will be understood. But ultimately diagrams, what we discussed last time and the flow is which it comes under the design. So only thing is it has been bifurcated into high level and low level. So the high level design will be validated, of course, by project managers and leaders and it will be termed as system integration testing. So jitni bhi cheeze aapko integration ke lagegi. Integration ke aapko deployment diagram lagega, component diagrams lagenge. Okay, wo sare diagrams aapke high level mein aayenge. And uh, that testing is known as system integration. In low level, you know, your, uh, the activity charts, the use cases, okay. Even state chart ko aap high level mein bhi uh, state chart, one and state chart zero, as in the level zero and level one. Usko bhi aap bifurcate kar sakte ho. Okay, so level zero would come into component testing. Even class diagram in overall view can come into component testing. Sequence diagram can come into high level testing. So then finally comes your coding. Hame lagta hai as a software engineer, only coding is important. But no, as you see, this coding comes last. Or logo ko lagta hai ki coding ke baadi testing hogi. No, there is already a lot of testing being done after, before your coding starts. When your coding starts, then actually your unit testing. So this unit testing is on your block of code. ठीक है हर फंक्शन ब्लॉक आपका टेस्ट होता है सो so, इसके भी आगे कोडिंग में भी व्हाइट बॉक्स टेस्टिंग ब्लैक बॉक्स टेस्टिंग वो और डिटेल में वी विल लुक फॉरवर्ड बट अल्टीमेटली इन दिस वी मॉडल ओके आफ्टर दिस कोडिंग एंड यूनिट टेस्टिंग दिस वी मॉडल इज कंप्लीट राइट एंड ऑब्वियसली आफ्टर दैट वी विल हैव योर ब्लैक बॉक्स एंड व्हाइट बॉक्स व्हिच कंप्लीट्स द एंटायर ओवरऑल फ्लो एंड द टेस्टिंग पार्ट so these were the various phases of the v model the requirements of business requirement specification and system requirement specification okay they begin life cycle model just like the waterfall model okay so normally jaise hame lagta hai but in this model before development is started a system test is created okay so system test ek document hai jisme aapko pure testing ke uske parameters uska outcome aapko शो करना इफ यू वॉन्ट टू गो एन टू डिटेल दिस इज एंटायरली टॉपिक्स रिलेटेड टू सिस्टम टेस्टिंग एज यू कैन सी दैट दिस इज अगेन इन डेप्थ एंड एज आई राइटली सेट ब्लैक बॉक्स टेस्टिंग एंड व्हाइट बॉक्स टेस्टिंग ओके सो दिस वी विल हैव अ डिफरेंट लेक्चर ऑल टूगेदर लेट्स नॉट कंफ्यूज दिस विद द करंट टॉपिक विच वी आर गोइंग थ्रू so ultimately what we are just trying to say that a test uh, system test and a test plan is documented after every phase okay so here also you can click and you will get that how the test cases need to be created of course this also we will take in detail so need not worry okay so basically uh, the test plan it focuses on the meeting meeting the functionality specified in the functional gathering okay so jo bhi aapne aapke srs ya requirement gathering ya business gathering mein bataya hai un sab ke validation jo hai wo aapke test cases mein aayenge so it is more related to your uh, functionality specified to requirement gathering phase that is the initial phase okay so we already discussed what is hld so it focuses on system architecture overall overview of the solution platform system product and the services and process so if your question comes on hld you have the 
precise answer over here and an integration test plan is created so requirement gathering ke liye aapko normal system test plan banana padta hai hld ke liye aapko integration test plan banana padta hai yahan pe already it is mentioned that integration testing is required okay in low level you have component test so yahan pe already it is mentioned that component testing is required so in low level phase where actual software components are designed yahan pe integration wale components ko yahan pe actual wale components ko uh, showcase kiya gaya ja jata hai it defines the actual logic for every component of the system so class diagram with the methods related to classes they come under lld then comes the implementation phase where you are actually doing your coding so this is a bottom of the v shape model theek hai log ko lagta hai ki we should start with the coding but actually it is the bottom most part okay so there is a lot of things to be done before you actually start coding so in your assignments also and uh, your project based learning also for this particular subject as i rightly said in the previous motivational lecture that you should not focus on the coding we are not interested in this particular lab that aapko apna product ko execute karke dikhana we are interested at how you have made your test plans how you have made your design how you have done the analysis okay which algorithm have you selected for your uh, project okay we are not at all interested in this particular assignment practicals that you should show us the software coding we are interested to we to understand that what software you are going to use what hardware you are going to use what strategy you are going to use and you should be able to justify that there are in number of strategies in the market and why i have selected this strategy for my project why it is the best strategy i feel that my project if this it uses this strategy it will be best for that project it will be best uh, uh, optimized uh, product after using that method strategy analysis design okay there can be n number of design on a same problem statement okay so you can create five designs you can do the validation testing on it and you can see that which test plan comes out to be the best so you yourself can select after the test plan that what design you should be taking out of the five your own designs okay you can have a team where every person would be requested to create their own design and showcase so then those designs would be go uh, went to the testers for the validation testing and then the testers can tell you no this design is the best among the five but this design has a drawback so this design can be covered by another design so why can't we have an integrated design of the three design showcased somewhat like that so you need to you know do the jugglery of all these things in your practicals expected and it's really fun and you enjoy it you uh, know so coding is one type of enjoyment and designing is one type of enjoyment obviously it is our flair of interest if you are more interested in coding than design then probably you can look out for those types of jobs but if you are really interested in design trust me you will get the highest paid jobs ever okay and obviously if you want to become an entrepreneur so you have to hire other people for coding but design you have to look about it as a senior professional because if your design fails probably your product would fail at the end okay so coming to the advantages of v model so it's simple and easy to use but testing activities like planning test designing of course in testing also there is designing okay we only think that designing can be in the implementation part or for the product or for the analysis no for every phase in fact okay in fact for every phase we have discussed there can be design for requirement analysis there can be a design for analysis also it can be a design for design it can be a system design integration design for coding there can be a design for testing there can be another validation design for maintenance there can be another design okay so design is something which is required at every phase so if you do the proper design then you will save a lot of time in coding okay hence higher chances of success over the waterfall model that's why v model is preferred better than the waterfall model kyunki aapki testing har phase ke end mein ho jati hai to aapko failure hone ke chances kam hote hain failure hone ke chances kam hote hain to success rate jyada badh jata hai okay then proactive defect tracking so it finds out the defect at the very early stage okay kyunki aapke har stage pe uh, 
वैलिडेशन हो रहा है टेस्टिंग हो रहा है तो ऐसा नहीं है कि लास्ट स्टेज पे आपको कोई एरर्स मिलेंगे तो काफी अर्ली स्टेज पे आपके डिफेक्ट्स सॉल्व हो जाएंगे इन वन ऑफ द लेक्चर्स आई टोल्ड यू व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन एन एरर एंड डिफेक्ट सो डिफेक्ट इज द मिस्टेक्स एंड द बग्स व्हिच आर ऑन द डेवलपर्स साइड बिफोर यू हैंड ओवर योर प्रोडक्ट टू द क्लाइंट वेयर इज द एरर इज द डिफेक्ट और द मिस्टेक और द बग्स व्हिच आर ऑन द क्लाइंट साइड ओके एट द टाइम ऑफ end testing or maybe at the time of delivery so that is why proactive defect tracking is easier in v model it avoids the downward flow of the defects okay downward downward flow of the defects means that if there is a defect over here it is if it the error is defect is um highlighted then it will be immediately rectified here and it will not be down that error will not go down that is the meaning of the sentence okay so it works well for small projects where requirements are easily understood okay so if there is a small project we model would be the best why for larger project uh, projects uh it is difficult for a larger projects there will be lot of complexity so in is if there is lot of complexity then validation at every phase interacting with all the people all the time uh, okay so avail their availability because you can engage all the people since over here all the people are engaged right so you can for a short term projects which may be of 6 months you can engage 6 months uh, all the experts but you can't engage experts for 5 years unnecessarily lot of money and human resource and time is wasted so basically for smaller projects we model would be recommended the best but for larger maybe some other models which we are supposed to discuss and sort it down and finally after all the models when we discuss we will have a comparison okay where we would be uh, interestingly discussing about the applications so as a homework i want you to find out what will be the examples of v model okay as a homework i want you to find out what would be the examples of v model and i'm expecting the answers on the description box or our whatsapp group for discussions okay so disadvantages very rigid and least flexible okay because at every phase there's an interconnection ओके देयर आर लॉट ऑफ इंटरकनेक्शन जहां पे ये एरर्स ज्यादा हो जाते हैं वहां पे डिपेंडेंसी बढ़ जाती है डिपेंडेंसी अगर बढ़ गई तो आपका फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी कम हो जाता है है ना ऑब्वियसली सॉफ्टवेयर इज डेवलप्ड ड्यूरिंग द इंप्लीमेंटेशन फेज सो अर्ली प्रोटोटाइप्स ऑफ द सॉफ्टवेयर आर प्रोड्यूस्ड ओके बिकॉज़ हर फेज पे आपका टेस्टिंग हो रहा है तो प्रोटोटाइप बहुत जल्दी आपका बन जा रहा है तो कई बार अगर आपका प्रोटोटाइप बहुत अर्ली फेज में बन गया तो उसको रीडिजाइन करना मुश्किल हो जाता है बैक ट्रैक करना मुश्किल हो जाता है लॉट ऑफ टाइम्स यू यू गेट टू नो द डिजाइन डिफेक्ट एट अ लेटर स्टेज सो यू कैंट अवॉइड दैट ओके अल्टीमेटली व्हेन द प्रोटोटाइप इज रेडी आफ्टर द डिजाइन फेज देन ओनली इट मेक्स सेंस टू डू टेस्टिंग एट सर्टन पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम so if any changes happen in a midway then test documents along with the requirements has to be updated so this becomes a drawback so when to use the uh, v uh, model so the v shaped model should be used for small to medium sized product projects where requirements are clearly defined and fixed okay uh, if if you remember for waterfall model we discussed that where uncertainty is there then waterfall model should be avoided where you know that the outcome is certain then waterfall model is easy to use and the best okay uh, for iterative type of models jahan pe repetitive cheeze hoti rehti hain wahan pe prototype model uh, acha rahega aur jahan pe we already know the requirements okay and for smaller type of projects we model would be recommended better than the waterfall model so v shape model should be chosen when ample technical resources are available okay why because a lot of dependencies you need to involve a lot of people right so that is why um, that limitation is there so high confidence of customer is required when choosing v shape model approach okay 
because acceptance testing cannot be done without the client. That is why. Since no prototypes are produced, there is a very high risk involved in meeting customer expectations. So maybe there are the drawbacks of V-shape. So we will be learning other models also in our upcoming lectures so that you know we start comparing and for your mini projects, you can choose that which model would be the most appropriate because your SRS document is your uh, practical assignment to create. So for your SR SRS document, you need to define which process model you're going to choose for your mini project. Okay. So any doubts from the viewers? There are 67 participants. Is there any doubts? If yes, then please ask. Otherwise, we would end the session. Okay, so we'll stop here. Thank you very much for your patience uh, listening. This is the Dr. Aisha Butalia I'm signing off for this session on the entire logistics on V model used in software engineering and project management. Have a nice day.